Whoa, whoa, hold up. So the Five Nights at Freddy's movie has an official date of when it's gonna start filming? You know what that means? It finally came after five years and never knowing what's happening? We got old and the FNAF movie's coming! You don't wanna know how many wigs I own for these dang videos. Hit that damn like button. Hello Five Nights at Freddy's fan, we have a major update concerning the FNAF movies. My good backstabbing buddy Jason Blum, who replaced me with MatPat, promised us earlier in the year that we would get some big announcements coming up for the FNAF film. And we were getting to the end of the year and now it's finally here when the movie will actually be starting shooting. And that means we can get a better idea of when we'll actually see this thing on the big screen. Not only that, but I'm also going to be bringing down all the rejected ideas for the FNAF movie and why it took five years for this thing to actually finally get off the ground moving might actually been a little bit more than that since it was announced it feels like forever ago but I'm gonna need you FNAF fans to give me your opinions down below are you happy to be getting this news we all thought the movie might have been dead or that it got shut down quietly now we know it's happening it's getting real and which one of these rejected ideas would you have been okay with for the FNAF film all right so this news is coming to us from reddit from Scott himself the creator of FNAF Five Nights at Freddy's and I was kind of scared right here because he titled it as bad news about the FNAF movie sad face Oh my god. No, don't tell me this isn't the announcement. I wanted to hear hi everyone before we get to the bad news concerning the state of Five Nights at Freddy's movie I wanted to share a brief history of the FNAF screenplay It's been a long road So let's take a look at some of the screenplays that have come and gone over the years in no particular order Or feel free to skip to the end real quickly to see the bad news and then come back and enjoy the list Don't you be one of them hosts who skip to the end of the videos hear these rejected scripts cuz yo Scott saved us from some stinkers some of these came from big studios some big directors some from me some from other hired writers I gave the screenplays a name and I'll include a brief synopsis as what ultimately led to each screenplay being rejected let's get started the F screenplay basic setup group of teenagers troublemakers break into Freddy's chaos ensues that seems like the basic plot that what we could get for five nights of Freddy's but the problem he said although a pretty basic setup there was a lot of odd choices here which only got weirder as the story continued. The story ended with our protagonist in a secret underground animatronic factory that was designing robots for the government. And that would have been a really weird twist right there. The FNAF Chuck E. Cheese type place was really a government hideout. Okay. He said he rejected that just because it's straight too far away from the source material. Tossed. Alright, cool. Next one here he titled Plushies Take Manhattan. Basic setup? Plushies Take Manhattan. Problems? Plushies Take White? Who was there sitting in the writer's room like Five Nights at Freddy's? Oh yeah, I've, I've know all about this i've seen the map pat videos let me hit you with this plushies get out of here burned with fire good good choice scott uh he has the next one here called it random charlie screenplay basic setup charlie and friends sneak into freddy's after hours to retrieve a lost toy okay that's not bad i kind of like that problems although sharing names of familiar characters from the series these characters had nothing to do with their game and book counterparts so while featuring familiar elements of the game it seemed too loosely based on the game and lost a lot of its impact because of it felt like a random bag of fnaf elements with no real stakes man that's something that we see happen before is like okay we'll add the names of the characters from the video games we'll give you the basic setup of what's happening in the video games but we're not going to dive deep into the lore you've set up and is the whole reason there's a whole big community of fans waiting for this film so again another good reason why scott was delaying this film constantly right there so i, I kind of would have liked that kids going back to freddy's to retrieve a toy that could have been some fun setup right there the next screenplay he says he calls it silver eye kira and i both worked on three versions of silver eye screenplay over the course of about a year trying to find the right approach to the story from the first book these were the first attempts i made myself to write a screenplay after realizing it was going to be a difficult to find someone who understood the lore enough to do it unfortunately it also meant these screenplays screenplay suffered greatly from my inexperience even Kira with her writing experience couldn't save them although these had some random good elements I ultimately decided to focus on making screenplays for the games and not the books right there I think it took a lot of balls for Scott to admit that right there because ever since I keep mentioning the movies getting constantly and constantly delayed because of the creator there's always those people in the comments that are like this is a horrible idea why do you have the creator have so much power over this brand over this movie and the fact that he admitted right there 
I can write the books and the video games, but writing the movie is a whole different monster, and even though I gave it my best attempt, it was not worthy enough for a film, and he tossed it aside. So, like, Scott, big props to you, man, for saying that right there. Just because you know how to make the games and the books doesn't mean you can always translate it into a story, into a three-act structure, what's entertaining, what's funny, what's scary. So he even rejected his own script, man. What the hell? Next one here, we have Pawn Shop. Oh, my God, okay. A kid who watches after a pawn shop finds trouble when an animatronic is brought in. It turns out Freddy has been robbed and the animatronics were taken to different locations for sale. Other animatronics come to retrieve the one at the pawn shop and the kids and his friends get roped into an adventure. A creative approach but felt a little too much like a boy and his animatronic. Too much after school adventure, not enough horror. The verdict seemed like a good idea at the time. Yeah, I could see that. There's missing a lot of elements there, like you wouldn't take place in the Freddy's restaurant. It would take place in a pawn shop, but that wouldn't be a nice little side spin-off story, or maybe that way you could have it in continuity with the games. I still, I think that kind of could have been cool, and I would actually like to see that even as not a FNAF movie. Someone right there, steal that idea and make it into a film. The next screenplay they rejected is called Cassidy. Diving deep, this screenplay packed in a lot of lore. Following the story of Cassidy, problems spanning multiple times Time periods following multiple characters and featuring lore from multiple games. This was pretty saturated, saturated to a fault. It may have been satisfying to most hardcore fans, but it would have left the majority confused and lost. Hey wait, maybe this was the most accurate screenplay. Verdict? Ultimately more a visual encyclopedia than a movie. This just wasn't satisfying even to me out. Again, really smart choices by the creative team here because they made a movie that was for the hardcore fans, the guys who probably watch MatPat videos to the extreme and really dive deep into the lore, secrets, and hidden details in FNAF. But to my mama, grandmama, my little sister who has no idea about FNAF, they would have hated this movie. They would have not gone out to see it because they would have felt alienated like this isn't user friendly. Uh, of course, we know we would love these movies to be made for us, but the majority of the public are going to be non-FNAF fans who go out and see this and they need to be able to understand this movie and enjoy it so that we can get sequels. So... It's kind of cool that they rejected an idea that was too hardcore. Next story they have here is called Misfit Kids. Basic setup, single mom brings her kid to a new town. Kid finds Freddy. Hilarity ensues. Hilarity? What the hell? Uh, one of the problems in creating a modern day story with an old Freddy setting is finding a way to connect the protagonist to the restaurant. Finding a reason to be there and finding a reason for them to stay. The problem was that the reason for this kid to go to Freddy's was too contrived and too forced. Verdict? Not a bad setup, but it didn't work. If I don't care about the characters, there's a good chance no one else will either. Yeah, so it just seemed like one of the basic ideas that just did not have enough in it to impact. Couple more here getting to the end, like for real, remember guys, this is almost seven to five years of rejected FNAF stories until we finally got the good one. So bear with me. Next one is called Ghost Trackers. A group of amateur ghost trackers sneak into the abandoned Freddy's. Problem, although a very common setup for this sort of movie, the problem again arose about how to give these characters a connection to Freddy itself. What ended up happening was too much of the story went to their own backstory and their own hardship. It took the spotlight away from the story of Freddy. Verdict, a stronger connection between protagonists and Freddy was needed. Lesson learned learn honestly i would have hated that that seems like such a basic cliche oh there's ghost investigators and fnaf in there that would have felt like one of those movies that didn't feel like fnaf it felt like it was meant to be something else and then they just slapped the fnaf name on it so i'm glad they didn't go with that one second to last one here they have it as insane basic setup another ghost tracker variation this one involved the fun time animatronics underground ball pit tunnels and a marionette out for revenge uh, problems as some of the other screenplays ventured too far into adventure this one went far into action too all over the place with too many characters doing too many things so this seemed to be coming off more like an action movie instead of a straight up horror so yeah not really a big fan of horror action movies and right here the creme de la creme the mike screenplay all right this one he has it as basic setup this makes sense why didn't i think of this before problems actually this is a good mix it has the best pieces from all the previous scripts not really any problems here all the right characters all the right motivations all the right stakes. Verdict, yeah, we're going with this one. It's fun, it's scary, and it has a great central story. And remember, he started this off by saying that there was some bad news, this was the bad news. Oh, right, so on to the bad news. The bad news is there won't be any more screenplays to add to this list. We're officially making the Mike screenplay. Filming starts in spring. Spring 2021, cameras are gonna start rolling on the Five Nights of Freddy's movie. That means within the next couple of months, we're getting casting, we're getting directors, we're getting all sorts of information 
information about this movie. And when it starts filming, set photos galore, leaks, you guys know I'm gonna be on top of that. One thing that we have to wonder here is why it's called the Mike script, okay? Is that just maybe one of the main characters? Or is Mike the person who pitched it? Is that, does that go in fact with maybe the actor they have in mind? Or maybe something else in there? Like, I wish he would have just given us a taste of the story that they're going with for this Mike screenplay when he gave us all these other rejected stories right here. But with a filming start date of spring 2021, that means we're getting the FNAF film sometime in the year 2022. It's finally here, y'all. I told y'all a couple of videos back, the earliest we would see it is 2022, and your boy was on the case. I really hope Jack Black is cast in this. I know he's been doing a lot of FNAF stuff lately, but it might just be for the gamer for the fun of it, but I'd love to see him a part of it. Who knows who they're gonna get cast in here, but it's official, guys. They're moving forward. I'm still also extremely excited for Willy's Wonderland here, and I'm glad that these movies will be able to live coincide. I mean, when the FNAF movie starts filming, Willy's Wonderland will actually, I think, by that time be released to the public, so that's gonna be fun and only hype that movie up. I wanna hear from you fans down below. Which rejected screenplay did you like? Which would you have been okay with? And how do you feel that we finally have official news on the FNAF movie status and when it'll start filming? Also, don't forget to check back tomorrow on Side Flick. We had some Deadpool 3 news and other stuff that had dropped, but this FNAF news is what y'all guys asked for, so I made a video on it, so be subscribed, hit that like button, and come back tomorrow for more good movie content in your life. But as always, my name is Chris. Take care.